go over how we use the financial calculator. If you haven't purchased one, I strongly recommend that you pick one up because these are very handy. They're going to be calculations that are really difficult to do if you don't have a financial calculator. Plus, if you take the CFA exam or the CFP, CFA is Chartered Financial Analyst, CFP is Certified Financial Planner exams, you are allowed to use one of these financial calculators and they are helpful for solving some of these problems. Let me tell you that I was one of the last people to convert to using a financial calculator. I've had one for years. I learned to solve these problems either through formulas or through tables in the back of the book, but a number of years ago I was taking the CFP exam and I said, you know, I better learn how to use this. And it was quite handy. I was able to solve a couple of problems much easier by using the calculator. So I think it's a worthwhile investment and you should you should do it. Now, there are a number of calculators. This one is the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus. Actually, this is a professional model, so it has a couple extra functions, but the one you have is basically the same. In fact, I can make it look like the one you have. Um, switch versions. I can switch it to the student version, but I just like the way the um, the professional version looks. All right. Some of the things you should do. You should set your calculator for more than two decimal places. Because if we're solving a problem and you get an answer like 0 0.015, 1.5%, it will round off to 2%. But 1.5% is not 2%. Or, or let's say it's Point, it, let's say it's 1.51%, it will round off to 2%. If it's 1.49%, it'll round off to 1%. That's not right. So you want to make this at least four decimal places, and preferably, I prefer to make it uh, floating, so it shows all the decimal places I can round off myself. And the way you do that is you hit second, and down here the period uh, above it, and I don't know how readable it is on this video, it says format, you hit that, and then you can set the number of decimal places. I'm going to set it for nine. That means floating. Or, uh, yeah. And then hit enter. And you see the equal sign. And then when I clear it, now you don't see any decimal places. So when we solve problems, you'll see as many decimal places as possible. Now, the functions you're going to use the most are in this row here. These are the time value of money functions. And let me just write those down. Going across. There's an N. N is the number of periods. There's an I slash Y, which means interest rate per year. There is a PV key, which is for present value. There's a PMT, that stands for payment, but essentially that's an annuity, and we'll be doing annuities in the course. Okay, annuities are streams of equal payments made at equal intervals. An example of an annuity would be a mortgage payment. And the last key along that row is the FV key, that is for future value. And if you punch in these, if you give it a couple of um, a couple of variables, you're able to solve for the other one with this CPT key. Let's let's just look at a couple of simple problems. Let's find the future value of one hundred dollars invested today. in five years if the interest rate is nine percent. So how do we do that? Well, we know that n is equal to five, so we hit five and then the n key. 
and you see an equal sign it means it's registered we have the interest rate and on the calculator you put it in as a whole number you don't put it in as 0 0.09 as you would if you were doing a calculator uh, calculation by hand the present value is a hundred I didn't call it present value but that's a hundred dollars today so that's present value so let's type that in PV and then we hit CPT compute FV so it's going to be a hundred and fifty three dollars and eighty six cents you'll notice that it has a negative sign the sign of positive uh, the sign of present value and future value will always be the opposite and when we're solving for some one of these other functions like the interest rate you're going to need uh, to put in one of those as a negative so let's let's uh, let's do another question let's find let's find the present value of two hundred dollars received in ten years and let's use an interest rate equal to twelve percent so how do we clear it you can't just keep hitting this because the numbers are still stored here in fact if I hit compute FV I still get the answer so the numbers are still in there to clear this you need to hit the second key and right above the FV key it says CLR TVM clear time value of money I don't know again how easily you can see that on the video but second think of it as second FV and so now it's cleared watch if we hit compute FV nothing's there okay so in this case what do we know we have an interest rate or I'm sorry we have a number of periods of 10 we have an interest rate of 12 we have a future value of 200 and we say compute present value and so it's 64 39 again negative sign there so if you put sixty four dollars and thirty nine cents in your bank account and it earns twelve percent a year in ten years it will be worth two hundred dollars you can also solve for the interest rate or the number of periods and now I'll, I'll do some tu tutorials on that but let me show you how to do that on the calculator find uh, the rate of return if you invest one hundred dollars and it grows to a hundred and twenty five dollars in two years all right, so again I want to clear my time value of money workspace this is future value this is present value we know the number of periods two is the number of periods we want 100 for the present value I should put this in as negative but I want to show you the error you get if you don't put in one is positive and one is negative so I'm going to put in present value is 100 I'm going to put in the future value of 125 and when I say compute I slash Y the interest rate I get error 5 that means it didn't like it because this was positive and this was positive so let me just clear that and let me just put in the 100 everything else is still in there change the sign plus minus key PV and then compute the interest rate now we get an interest rate 11.8 percent Okay, let's do one more. If you want to compute the number of periods, so let's say find find how long it takes a hundred dollars to grow to a hundred and fifty dollars. if the interest rate is 
is 7%. All right, so let's clear our workspace second, clear TVM. And what do we want to do? We want to put in, we don't know N, that's what we're solving for. We know the interest rate, 7%. We want 100. Again, remember this should be the opposite sign of the future value. We'll make that negative. And we'll put in our future value of 150. And we say compute n. So it's going to take about six years, 5.99 years. So again, good way to solve these out. If you wanted to solve for n for the number of periods, and I, I have a tutorial where I show you how to do that. If you don't have the financial calculator, you have to use logarithms to work this out, which makes it a bit trickier. Um, so it's a lot nicer when you're able to do these, these types of problems with the financial calculator. It's well worth the money. All right, let me show you one more set of functions that you'll be using on the calculator. And up here, there's a key. Right next to the second key, there's a key that says CF. It stands for cash flow. It's a cash flow worksheet. So we can put a stream of numbers in. We can put a number in for time period zero. We can put in a, a cash flow in year one. Let me just put in a number here. I'll put in 50. You have to hit enter. Then you see the equal sign. When I push the down arrow key, it asks for the frequency. So if this number were to repeat 10 times, instead of doing it 10 times, I would just say frequency 10. And this will come in handy for solving some other problems, but um, I'll do a separate tutorial on that. But I just wanted to show you that this is something you can use as well. Well, let me just solve one of the problems we had before. We found the present value of $200 received in 10 years. So let's see how this works. If I, I could use this, this isn't quite as efficient. But let me use this cash flow. Okay, nothing in, in year zero. And we have zero in year one. And in fact, the frequency is, is that for nine years you get nothing. So I put in a nine, that's the frequency and then you get 200 and let's enter that and then you can go to something called NPV net present value you have to put in the interest rate 12 percent enter down arrow key and compute and I believe that's what we got before 6439 and I'll do a separate tutorial on that when we need it but for now these are the functions you'll want to use. When you look in the textbook, a lot of times they'll have a section where they'll show you how to solve problems using the calculator, and they'll tell you what n is, what i slash y is. So they're telling you what to punch into your calculator.